Hi, and welcome to lecture today. Today we're going to be talking about how to sit with your ego. Now, a lot of times the ego gets a really bad rap. We tend to want to say that the ego is manipulative and egocentric, maybe even childlike. And that's just simply not true. The function of the ego is to keep you alive. And it does this by helping you to determine what is good and bad. Now, we talk about this all the time. From a yoga philosophy standpoint, there really is no good and bad. Everything is just as it is in an experience. And so if we begin to look at our ego as a function of our safety and well-being, then we can understand that the ego has placed these judgments onto things because it has perceived them as dangerous to it or our physical body. Now, the ego doesn't know the difference between the ego, as in the intellectual ego, or the ego, as in the physical body. And because of that, we get really upset when people do things to us or we feel that we've been attacked in any way. When we start to befriend the ego and really sit with it in honest objectivity, then we can really begin to have an interdependent relationship with the part of us that really wants to keep us alive and the part of us that knows that we will never die. From a mindfulness perspective, we can look at all of those internal dialogues that we have about things being good and bad, our own preferences and biases to things, and we can pull back into that observer consciousness and ask ourselves why we've bought into the idea that something is good or why we've bought into the idea that something is bad. It's really just that simple. When I feel scared or when I feel like I'm not being heard or that my welfare and well-being is at stake in any way, I begin to go into my ego. This is normal and natural. And as we're coaching clients, we need to let our clients know that the ego is something that we can befriend, not necessarily something that we need to squash or lessen in any way. Everything is a misunderstanding. And when we can meet our ego where it's at, hear it, and actually process what it's saying, and then allow it the opportunity to forgive itself for buying into that idea, then we can truly reprogram and repattern not only our thinking, but our behavioral patterns as well. This is a big part of the coaching process. Sometimes your clients are going to come to you and they're going to tell you, you know, I'm really ashamed of myself. You know, I was in this business relationship with another individual and that individual ended up doing something that made me feel scared or made me feel like I was going to lose power in my business. So I did something to them in retaliation and now I feel ashamed. Well, you know what? That's normal and we can normalize it for our clients by letting them know that Anytime anyone feels that their livelihood or well-being is being threatened, they will in fact do something in retaliation. It's a reaction and it's part of keeping you safe. Now, if we are coaching our clients towards better interdependent relationships, then we might offer this as an opportunity for our clients to really come back to do their work with their ego. So what does that even look like? Well, if I buy into the idea that my colleague or my business partner is doing something to uh, take something away from me, then I need to acknowledge that and I need to forgive myself for buying into that. I can acknowledge that I get scared sometimes and I can acknowledge that I feel scarcity just like everybody else. But if I really pull back and I look at the universe as a whole, I look at even this planet, even the country, and I can see that there is enough for everyone. It's a mindset. It's a perception shift. We're reframing. Sometimes we get scared. Remember when you were a kid and you got scared of the dark? It's really no different. When we reframe the dark as a time for quiet and rest, it no longer feels scary like a monster is going to come out from underneath our bed. 
we can do the same thing when we react to things that activate our ego's sense of self. The ego doesn't want to be homogenized. The ego doesn't want to be like everyone else. The ego does want to be accepted and it wants to be connected, but it wants to do it on its terms based on its past experiences. And therein lies the misperception. If the ego can relax into the experience and trust the process, then you can stop working against yourself and you can begin to work with yourself. I hope this information has been helpful. The next time you feel your ego rear its head in your mind, you might notice how you react to it, to its presence, and perhaps its criticisms. Oftentimes, the ego takes on the role of the inner critic or the inner disciplinarian. And when we know that it's just a misunderstanding, we can meet the ego where it's at, hear its words knowing that it's not meant to hurt us, and we can forgive ourselves for buying into the ideas that it's believing. When we do this, we create a connection between ego and self that is really always there, but may be elusive because of the perception of separation.